Hey, welcome guys. This is Eagle Sci-Fi Mahler. Today I'm going to review and build of Rebel's uh, Star Wars Snowspeeder. Uh, this is uh, the Rebel of Germany. Uh, you can get these online. I got this through eBay. I believe it was only like $15 including shipping. Uh, a little bit about the model. Um, it's a 1 to 52 scale. comes with 23 parts and it's a, a level 3. It comes unpainted so you'll have to paint everything on it. Let's look at the uh, instructions, directions that they send. So, uh, the father gets, of course, it's in German, but it does have English translation. Uh, the uh, comes with your normal stuff, directions on basic modeling. Uh, there's a, a copy of your different parts, and it has some very nice color uh, directions for it. So, uh, You'll have to paint again. It does come with some orange decals, as you can see on the model here. I did use the orange decals that came with the model. And take a look at that. It has the ones under the windshield and under the uh, laser cannons. And, of course, the front and back. So there's a little bit about the uh, decals. Oh, came off a little. Um, I'm talking about the base a little bit. This little base that I, I made. Uh, just uh, taking a better look at the model. Uh, let's talk about the one of the most difficult parts was the canopy. The canopy came in a one piece, but it was totally clear. So I had to mask off all these little windows with some uh, tape and then prime it and then paint it in my final cutter color. I primed it and I actually used a surface primer as the final color from Vallejo. Uh, this was the uh, color once I... Uh, I did a base coat of regular primer gray and then used that as the top coat, which um, was the color that uh, I thought looked really well with it. But anyway, the uh, canopy, again, that was a little tricky. Uh, that's probably the most difficult part of the build, is getting it all masked off, masking off all these different windows and getting them look nice and clean. Uh, the next part was the two pilots that you get. Uh, they come in just the regular gray plastic, so you have to paint them. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, just coated them with a uh, orange spray paint and then did my uh, detail paintings if I can get a closer look up there plus I'll put some pictures here. Uh, what's awkward is uh, when you have them out their hands kind of look like they have boxing gloves on them. It's a little awkward. In a model you can't quite tell a difference so I guess it's not a big deal. Maybe it's even on purpose. I don't know uh, to show their hands but anyway so just a little painting detail. Once I paint them orange uh, didn't, went in with some white, some black and then a little bit of weathering to make the suits uh, just uh, have a little bit more texture to them. I did a uh, cup paint a little bit inside the cockpit uh, the screens and stuff blue and different things of that nature not terribly visible uh, but you still are able to look in and see the pilots and whatnot. Uh, the ship comes together pretty well, except for right in here on both sides. The two parts, the lower and upper part of the model, have a pretty substantial gap. It's not really noticeable on the stand. Not terribly worried about it. I probably will not be entering this in any contest or anything. It was just uh, done for fun. Um, but I did have a hard time... Um, getting that together. It won't stay together and I don't know, maybe if you uh, glued it, it would. Uh, but I didn't worry about it. Take a little bit better look at the uh, bottom. There were no decals, so I had to paint that for the bottom. Uh, painted in sections. I just did my normal weathering. Once I uh, painted it, I clear coated it, uh, did some panel line wash and some dry pastels and then sealed in everything uh, with a dull coat, tester's dull coat. So uh, there's the model itself. Again, uh, it's, it fits pretty nice other than the parts that I mentioned. Uh, most of the parts fit together pretty well. It's not overly complex. Again, it's only 23 parts. And, uh, but it looks nice. Uh, the Bandai model um, may have a little bit more detail and slightly larger. Uh, this is approximately about 4 inches long and 3.5 inches wide. Um, so the Bandai model... I believe it's 148, so it's going to be slightly larger, uh, but it's also going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, but this is fairly cheap, and it has some nice lines and details. Uh, what I did for a base, I want to do something a little bit more. It comes with your old standard round base. This is actually part of the base right here. Uh, what I did is I took some aluminum foil and, and kind of folded it over several times so it would have some thickness to it. Crunched it up a little bit. I poked the stand through there. This is just a piece of wood that I had laying around. And uh, I attached 
the aluminum foil on here with some hot glue from a hot glue gun. I went around the edges and hot glued the aluminum foil onto the uh, wood block and then also added some uh, hot glue in different places where there was like too much void. Uh, it was supposed to look like a rock but it almost came out like a crunched metal so that's maybe something I can keep in mind if I do something later for wreckage. Um, the aluminum foil and the hot glue have kind of a weird neck. Still pulls off the rock look that I want for it. It's not actually that visible once the model's on top of it. But anyway, once I got the aluminum foil uh, attached with the hot glue, I then took white glue and put it all around uh, the uh, aluminum foil and parts of the wood that I want uh, shown. And then I just put, I have some uh, hobby sands. I've used this on several of my projects and still have quite a bit. Just took a, a little bit of that, sprinkled it onto uh, the white glue and let it dry. I uh, took a clear coat and sealed it in. And then I just went in uh, with a gray primer. I painted everything gray and then came back and airbrushed in and hand painted uh, the white on here. Uh, to kind of give it the snowy look. Um, I added for the rock, I added some of my panel line ink and to give it that the look that it has now. So that's just a gray primer with some panel line ink. And I don't think I added any other paint beyond that. Um, but I like the look of it, kind of was what I was going for. And uh, I did use a um, just a small lighter and you can tell where I bent this stand. I wanted it kind of an angle a little bit. Um, so I just used a lighter and you get it hot enough to where it's, it'll move, uh, but not to where it's kind of stretching out, but you can move it and it'll quickly set back into shape and uh, it's not holding any weight. So I'm not too worried about losing any strength by doing that. Uh, so a simple uh, way to display my bottle, uh, a little bit nicer than what just came with it. It's also quite a bit more stable than that plastic uh, base that comes on there. It's a little bit more weight to it. And uh, I think it has a nice little look to it for a little, uh, you know, desktop or on your shelf so if you want to display this model. Uh, it's a good size for dioramas. Uh, the model is. It's obviously not that big. Uh, but it has nice detail and the pilot says uh, just what you want to put into it. And so there you go. Um, hope you like it. And uh, next time I think I'm going to be moving up to a bigger project. Um, so it may be a while for my next video. Uh, but who knows. Uh, until then, uh, take care.